Hey, how's it going, everybody? Scott Sprites are here. He's Doug Upstone. We are Us Against the Spread, brought to you by DocSports.com. And uh, we're talking a little Thursday, Friday football, and uh, Doug and I are going to go head-to-head on a particular game in college football this week, which is on Friday. Hope you guys all had a great weekend. Appreciate those of you who have joined us over at Us Against the Spread, uh, 1999, $19.99 gets you uh, a whole bunch of football. Uh, we usually talk about eight to 10 college football games on a Thursday show. And the Friday show is the entire NFL slate on Sunday. And of course, Monday night football, you're talking close to a hundred games a month for basically $5 per week. Again, want to say thanks to those of you who jumped on board. We're really excited uh, by what we've seen from you guys so far and really look forward to even becoming a little bit more interactive with these, hopefully down the road, but uh, give us a chance to get our technical feet wet first, so to speak. <laughs> We're going to talk about Thursday night football in this report, which is the Bears at the Commanders. We're going to talk about some Friday night college football in this report. We'll get to all that in just a moment. Uh, coming off a winning week there, Doug, at DocSports.com with your premium plays. And let me make that clear again. The premium plays that Doug and I both have are still in one place exclusively. That's on our homepages over at DocSports.com. Uh, Doug, I know you uh, ended up having a nice uh, premium weekend with your football. Yeah, went to, went two and zero, oh and uh, should have gone three and zero oh because I had a teaser that included uh, Philadelphia at minus three, who had it covered until the last play of the game. <laughs> so and they <laughs> they got the field goal in overtime, but uh, didn't do many good. So that became a no play. I uh, hit the other part of the teaser with Baltimore, but hey, you know what? I'll take two and zero oh all the time, Scott. I know you would too. So that was really good. So we're just hey, we're moving ahead, and uh, I I like you know this whole week. Looking at the games early, uh, we're looking a little bit earlier than normal, but looking at the games ahead. So for the for the us against the spread, I think uh, I've got to have a nice uh, nice week coming ahead. Now I know you continue to do well though. To let everybody yeah, those, know those are nice, those games we're going to talk about this week and include like Alabama at A and M. Uh, I still call it the Red River Shootout. Deal with it. Uh, the Red <laughs> River rivalry is too hard for me to say, uh, but that, of course, is Oklahoma, Texas. We're going to talk about that game. So a lot of good games that we're going to talk about on us against the spread. It's been a nice run going back to September 11th, which was that Monday night Jets win over Buffalo. Um, now 14 and five with a couple of pushes, 74 percent college football and NFL combined. I lost the top play on Saturday, a six star. And that was an early game. And then I won my final five plays in all sports overall. So we go five and one. And then Sunday, we swept the NFL for the second straight Sunday. And uh, that included my seven star on the Baltimore Ravens, who uh, kicked the Browns out of Cleveland. I mean, it was just, it was pretty, pretty ugly for the Cleveland Browns. Of course, Watson banged up going into that. Uh, uh, couldn't get the start because he was banged up. But uh, anyway, seven star there. And uh, so it has been a real nice few weeks here since September 11th, 14 and five. And I think it's now we've given out, I've talked about like 36 to 38 games uh, that I've had an opinion on at us against the spread. And I've hit 75, 76% of those plays thus far. So folks, if you want to jump on and, and also uh, three and one so far on the money shot, which is our best bet from each and every show. Anyway, that'll be Thursday night, college football version of us against the spread Friday night for this week's NFL. Oh, I wanted to mention real quickly, folks, don't forget about the baseball playoffs, man. They start Tuesday. Yeah. And it's my favorite time for the baseball playoffs because we got day games every day until we get out of that wild card round. But uh, Doug and I will both be uh, featuring uh, games in the uh, Major League Baseball playoffs. And gosh, we don't get WNBA till Sunday. How crazy is that? But uh, had a tremendous run this season in WNBA. And we'll be back involved again. Uh, Doug, let's talk about the Thursday night game. I know you can't wait with this marquee matchup. Uh, the Bears at the Commanders. How about that? The Bears still allowed to play in the NFL. They ought to have relegation in the NFL just like they do in, you know, English Premier League soccer and Bundesliga and all that stuff. But the Bears are at the Commanders. Commanders laying six and a half to seven, Doug. Uh, total sitting right around 44 and a half. Uh, your thoughts? Kick this one off. I know last weekend the Bears they looked like they were going to finally win a game and do so impressively, and then they woke up and realized who they are, and they lost. Yeah, you know, the, having <laughs> lived in the, uh, the, let's just say, the general Chicago area, or at least certainly where I could pick up, you know, all the, all the different radio stations back at, back in the day, especially the AM stations, the, uh, boy, the phone lines had to be burning. Okay, last yes, last night and even today. Uh, today being Monday. Sorry on that. Uh, so with that, I mean, they had the game one, uh, 28-7, little over four minutes to go. Justin Fields 
actually look like an NFL quarterback. I mean, he completed 16 straight passes, Scott. I mean, he, he was fantastic. And all of a sudden, just like you said, it's like they realized who they were or either that or Denver was so embarrassed, they decided to quit making mistakes and they blew the game. So it's just oh, hard to believe that something like that could happen. Now, conversely, Washington, I thought, played really well uh, against Philadelphia. I mean, uh, the, uh, Howell had a very nice game just across the board. They had the lead early. Gave it up, not a surprise, but then, hey, they kept, they kept fighting to the end and they tied it on the last play of the game only to lose in overtime. Uh, this one, though, boy, I'm having a hard time even thinking about Chicago in this one uh, for that. I, what I am going to look at instead, though, is the total because the thing about it so far is Chicago uh, set an NFL record uh, this past week, for those that don't know. They're the first team that has to give up 25 or more points in 14 consecutive games. No team has ever done that. Now, if you also, if you listen to the Washington games this season, one of the things they keep talking about is how good the Washington defensive front is. The commander's defensive front is so good. Yeah, and that's why in their last three games, they've given up 33 or more points. <laughs> Scott, on this one, 44 and a half, I'm going to go over on this one. I just think that both defenses are going to give up enough points and there's just going to be enough offense to climb over that total. What are your thoughts on this one? We've seen four games in the NFL for these two teams thus far, and you've got a combined quarterback touchdown to INT ratio between Fields and Howell of 10 touchdowns, excuse me, 10 interceptions and 11 touchdowns. These guys aren't exactly, I mean, I know Fields, it's Halloween. He was, you know, dressed up as a real quarterback for a little while this past Sunday, but, uh, you know, there are two players that I do really like in this game. Brian Robinson Jr. for the Commanders. Like the way he runs, like the way he makes his his short routes open for Sam Howell potentially to get the ball to him. Uh, Khalil Herbert for the Bears. Uh, another guy who can run well. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. If they do throw it on target to him, he can run for decent yardage after the catch. I like both of those guys. Uh, but the Bears' last pa uh, lack pass protection – uh, with a shaky quarterback at the helm to boot. Uh, Howell's been sacked 14 times so far this season and owns the 28th ranked passer rating. So listen, I know you mentioned about Washington. They've allowed at least 33 points in each of their last three games. We talked about, or you did, Chicago giving up 25 points per game or more, uh, like it's going out of style. Uh, I'm going to go towards the side, though. At seven, I'm going to say an opinion Boy, I can't believe it. You ever watch Happy Days when you were younger in the 70s, Doug? I'm sure. going to get to the kid. Okay. Remember when the Fonz had to say he was wrong and he couldn't get <laughs> yeah. it? I'm rrr, rrr, right? Couldn't say yeah. I was wrong. Okay. Now, I can say I'm wrong when I'm wrong. I'm having a hard time saying the Bears, you know, as you walk to the window. <laughs> Bears plus seven, believe it or not, this dysfunctional organization. I, you know, It's not going to be a premium play. Don't no. go looking for it. Uh, it's not a premium play, but it is an opinion on the Chicago Bears, and Doug likes the over. Off to another big matchup, uh, Doug, and uh, gosh, these huge games we've got we're talking about today. Nebraska at Illinois, everybody's going to be glued into this one. Forget Dion, forget Colorado and Washington and Oregon and Georgia and Bama. we got Nebraska at Illinois and Champaign-Urbana. Uh, you see the uh, numbers right there, Illinois laying three and a half in this one. Uh, Illinois bounced back and forth. I see three and a half, then it goes to four in a few books. Yeah. Then it goes to three and a half, then back to four. As we're cutting this video, it's three and a half. Uh, Matt Rule has changed one thing in a hurry at Nebraska. Since blowing the opener at Minnesota, they are no longer losing close games by one score. <laughs> they're either getting blown out or they're beating teams by double digits. It's one or the other. Uh, listen, I still have faith in Matt Rule. I didn't expect overnight great success. I wasn't even sure if they'd get to a bowl game. So I wasn't one of those guys out there saying, oh, Nebraska's going to win seven or eight games in his first year. Second year, he's got to get to a bowl game. He still might this year because the Big Ten West is so bad. Uh, as far as Bielema, can I, is it too soon to say the Bielema era? I mean, he hasn't been there that long in Champaign-Urbana, uh, but he's already regressing. Illinois started last year seven and one straight up, six and two against the spread. Since then, if you throw out that anomaly against Northwestern, uh, they're three and seven straight up. They're averaging 17, just over 17 points per game. And Illinois this year, just this year alone, three and a half yards per carry. I mean, come on, nine touchdowns, eight picks through the air. Defense terrible, 110th against the run, bad against the pass. I get it with Nebraska, bad passing team. Sims and Harburg, 
Uh, they're connected on about 53% of their passes combined, Doug. But Harburg has just one pick. That's why he gives his team a chance. He's had just one pick. Uh, so he's eliminated those mistakes, costly mistakes that Sims was making. But I'll give you this. Huskers, 15th on the ground, 209 mm -hmm. yards rushing. 15th on defense, 87 yards rushing. Before Michigan, they were giving up less than two yards per carry. And they were leading the nation in sacks. So listen there, Mr. Illini boy. <laughs> Huskers upset over Illinois. Go Big Red. <laughs> the uh, So for those that don't know or have, have not heard, Scott is from Nebraska, and I was born in Illinois. So this was an easy game for us to choose. Sure, we could have gone Kansas State and Oklahoma State, but why would you do that when you have an opportunity to do this? So the at the same time, though, both of us, you know, when, when we came up with this idea to talk about it, this game, it was like, you know, hey, that really sounds fun. And then we started looking at the numbers that we already knew about. <laughs> and it became less fun, okay, yes. to have to do it. You know, because it's like, oh, that's right. These this team stinks. And this other team's not very good either. Okay. So so it just it changed the whole dynamic of it. But here, here's what I'm thinking of. Now I'd like to at least add a positive spin. And you you, you said a little bit. So you got two, two and three teams, but actually the the winner of this game is in a better position because the winner is likely then not for sure but th to go to a bowl game i think sure. the loser is probably out okay if, if you're two and four not to the not the schedule is impossible but these aren't good football teams so mm -hmm. so from that standpoint at least from a competitive standpoint you get there's something to actually watch or you know or just uh, to lean towards if, if for both teams both teams come in minus six turnovers. <laughs> I don't know where you where you go with that real well. Even though uh, you have actually the the uh, Cornhuskers have been better lately. They had eight the first two games. They've only had yep. two cents. So that's a, at least a positive. Now, from the standpoint, here's what I'm looking for. Here's my best case scenario as wearing the uh, blue and orange, is that Illinois wins the game. But when I found this, boy, I really started leaning the other way. If Illinois is a home favorite and they gave up 40, 40 or more points in their last game, they're 0 and 9 against the spread. Okay. So that's what I'm going for. I'll say, I'll, I'm going to agree with Scott and say, take the points, especially when you, if you can get the hook or, it, it, like you said, if it goes up to plus four. But in terms of the outcome, I'm still looking at the so called fighting Illini, baby. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can remember. Was Mike White the coach there? And, um, he was. You know, and, and I was going to say, I, I think Osborne was still in Lincoln. And Illinois was like third in the nation. And Nebraska went in there and beat them like 56 to three. Not trying to bring up bad memories here for you, Doug. No, Not no, no. You. I, I have a quick, <laughs> Mike White story. So Mike White, you know, couldn't get it. He, he'd been in the NFL for several years. For the, right. Nobody's going to remember who this guy was. But he was a really good quarterback coach, assistant coach, uh, offensive uh, offensive coach. So he did what a lot of, let's just say, somewhat older coaches have done over the years, gone back to college, get a job, mm -hmm. develop a resume, and then move on. But he was so uncommitted to, <laughs> to Illinois, he never actually even bought a house in Illinois. He rented mm -hmm. an apartment the three or four years he was there. Never bought a house. His family never moved there. <laughs> and Jeez. so but they did go to a Rose Bowl. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of the uh, Indianapolis quarterback, Jack. Um, oh, gosh. I can't think of his name. Uh, Trudeau? Played, uh, was it? You talking about Trudeau? Oh, uh, yeah. Jack Trudeau. There you go. And, and, he, and the Rose Bowl, they faced uh, Rick Neuheisel uh, of UCLA. And uh, couldn't wait for that game. Illinois back in the Rose Bowl. Uh, the first, I think the first four passes were touchdown passes that UCLA threw. It was 21 to nothing after like seven minutes. So yeah. that was that. So that's another Illinois highlight. <laughs> so, all right. So you're going to go with Illinois. And you did find that. Or, and then you said you started switching because you found that angle, which is good stuff. I just, I like underdogs. When you're talking about like similarly, similarly uh, level programs. And by that, I mean, both programs are in the Big Ten. Uh, they both are power five schools and they're both struggling. So it's not like Nebraska versus, you know, Tennessee Tech or Illinois against, you know, Arkansas, you right. know, little sisters of the poor. So you got teams that are kind of at the same level when it comes to talent and all that stuff. And when that happens, I like underdogs who outrush their opponents by more than two to one. And then you have an opponent who can't run and can't stop the run. And that's what we have here. So I'm going to give that a shot with Nebraska plus the points in this one.
And uh, obviously, both of these games, neither one, what I told you and what Doug told you about Washington, uh, the commanders against the Bears, and of course, this game on Friday, Nebraska, Illinois, neither one is a premium play for us, but uh, we did want to talk about them a little bit and uh, let you know where we stand. And, you know, again, Husker power, man. I'm going to tell you right now, prediction for year three of Matt Rule and Lincoln, Bielema won't be at Illinois, whether it's his choice or not. And Matt Rule will be getting the Huskers to his second straight bowl. Uh, so I don't know if it'll be third straight because he's going to have to let, win let a few games. Let me write that down so I can. Uh, so three years from now, we can we can grade it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I will. I you know that's stuff I like to. That's always I've lived my whole life. Somebody says something that I I might not agree with. Write it down and bring it up. And it's and I always get the same response. Well, I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> I only say I never said that if it doesn't come to fruition. So <laughs> right, well, but anyway. <laughs> So, all right, man. Again, folks, don't forget, check out all of our plays daily. Major League Baseball playoffs, soccer. I dabble in soccer. We've had a nice run. CFL, which we swept again this last weekend in the CFL, WNBA, and, of course, College of Pro Football. All the premium plays are exclusive for both of us at DocSports.com, where it's always been. Doug's homepage, my homepage. And, of course, don't forget us against the spread, dot DocSports.com, and that's where you can subscribe and hear about 100 games a month. College of Pro combined. For Doug Upstone, I'm Scott Spritzer. Folks, you know what to do. Put them in the wind column, everybody. We'll talk to you Thursday.